25, 25th chapter of Genesis. And while you're going there, I want to, I'm just going to just rant until you get there, amen? Is that okay? All right. Have you ever heard that, uh, heard, you know, you go to different places and they tell you watch what you say because the uh, power is in your words and stuff like yes. that? Yes. And you ever get to the point where that just hearing that can make you lose your mind? Because you think about it, it's like, wow, I gotta watch what I'm saying, I gotta this, I gotta that. And then you think about it, I'm going through this, but then they say, watch what you're saying because what you're saying can blow you, you can do this, can do that, right? Yes. It's to the point where you really think about it. If someone's gonna preach on that, they should go more in depth on that. Yes. There's a lot of stuff that as you begin to hear across the pulpit, that we should, uh, instead of just saying this and that, we must go more in depth about yes. it. Amen? Because when you think about it, Words are like pollen. <laughs> Have you ever heard of pollen? Yes. Yeah. You know? I was, uh, like I said, uh, last week we were talking about the pollen, right? And we were talking about the trees. How April uh, decided she wanted to plant some trees this year in the backyard. Well, I didn't want any trees, but she wanted trees, right? So it started off as one, and then she did her research and found out that you got to have more than one tree, right? And they're, they're not going to grow to be huge, but they, they're called miniature trees. Mm -hmm. So if you get more than one, actually I think it was supposed to, she got three. So you get those, you get these three trees, and these three trees controls the growth. So it's like, I wish I could get it so she can explain a little bit more. But with this being done, what happened is I realized, learning from her about, because she wants to garden and everything, I had no idea. Have you ever asked yourself how to, like, when you when you see people do their gut, clean their gutters, or you walk down the street and you see stuff growing in between the cracks, you know, uh, plants growing in between the cracks of a, of a, of a, uh, of a uh, concrete, yeah. or you look up on somebody's, uh, what you call that thing, the uh, gutters, mm -hmm. and in the gutters you see plants, yeah. and you're like, have you asked yourself, how did those plants get up there, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Well, it came from pollen. And pollen is the males, uh, it comes from the male plant. And it, 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 it's kind of, because with a seed, the seed doesn't care where it goes, long as it can, as long as it gets into the right position so that it can grow. So the pollen shoots everywhere, right? Okay. And this is plants, plants are reproductive and stuff. Okay, so, you know, you're walking down the street and it hits you in the face and stuff like that. And a lot of people break out and stuff. I, I wanted you to tell, me, tell them a little bit more about the reproduction and the pollen stuff, because I forgot how that works. Oh, the, the pollination? Yeah. Hello, hi. Um, I like gardening, so I do research about, um, you know, uh, plants and all of that. And this spring, I told my husband I want some apple tree for in a yard. We don't really have much big yard, but I told him I want an apple tree. Well, the idea is to get one. You know, I'm like, okay, one should be enough. But then I did my research. He said that if you just get one, it's not going to fruit because you need another species, another variety of, of apple tree. So it can pretty much pollinate each other. Mm -hmm. So pretty much you, if you have a tree, it will flower. It will do its thing. But it is another uh, pollen from another different kind of tree that comes to mature the flower so it will become fruit. Otherwise, it will just be a flower and fall off. It's not going to be a fruit, mm -hmm. you know. So, so now I have three in there. Hopefully, it will do the thing. So it's, kinda, it's, it's, it's funny and it's weird because I'm like, why? Because it, 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 it does not work as in a human. It works also as like, you know, in the trees where there's a male and a female and it will pollinate itself and it will reproduce and do, you know, do the thing that it's supposed to do. So, pollination is the word. Uh, she went kind of, not where I wanted to go, but she went where I wanted to go. But, but we, what I'm saying is, pollen is uh, it's like it's like our words are like pollen. We send it out there, and it, sometimes it comes. It depends on how fertile that seed is, okay, and to determine how long or the different types of how fast it comes back versus how slow it comes back. You see what I'm saying? So we have to be good. So that's what I'm saying as, as I begin to talk about pollen, because pollen is so high tech once you really start getting into the just of it. You know, you begin to wonder, I mean, I'm looking at this and you look at how it's amazing how 
you need more than one plant. But it's hard to tell the male from the female. Kind of look like the world now, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's hard to tell which is the male or the female because they both grow on this, they both can grow, probably grow from the same place. And then as the time goes by, they shoot out at a certain time. And when it shoots out, it shoots out until it gets to the right part. You have the, uh, the thing called spores, S-P-O-R-E, which is uh, it's called a asexual reproductive cell. Without, uh, it's the sexual reproductive cells of the, of the plant. Then you have the uh, angorio, A-N-G-I-O, sperm. It's the plant that has the flower reproductive seed in it. So there's so much parts of the plant that does the reproduction, but you never see it doing it. Right. Okay? Mm -hmm. You notice how the natural mimics the spiritual, but we never pay attention to either. Mm -hmm. So when it happens to us, when we get attacked in the natural or the spiritual, we look as if it's, we're being cursed. Right. Or we're looking at why, why is this happening to me? Why, why, why? What's going on in my life? Why is all this is happening? So I'm going somewhere with this pollen. Okay. Amen. So because sometimes we gotta, we sometimes we gotta educate, educate, edu, edu, I don't know why this is happening. Sometimes we have to educate ourselves to other things in order to see what God is saying. See, because when you start studying plants, it says seed bearing in itself. Okay. So as we begin to study the plant life, we begin to understand the reproductive cycle of our words. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? It makes sense. Mm -hmm. it makes sense. And so as we begin to look at that, we begin to start dissecting our words. Mm -hmm. Now, I'm going to dabble with a little bit of what we're going to talk on, on, on Bible class and blend it with today's uh, morning service, and then we're going to see what God goes from there. Amen? Amen. Amen. But think about this. And the reason I said Sunday, I mean Wednesday, because you might hear what I'm saying again Wednesday, but we'll go more in depth. This right here, this, is the most powerful tool that we have in our arsenal. Mm -hmm. The most deadliest tool we have in our arsenal, but we don't know that. This teaches us, the Bible teaches us how to speak. Yes. It teaches us how to hear God's voice. It teaches us how to speak like God. Did it not say in Genesis in the beginning God created man? It is what? In the image. It is what? In the image. Meaning that we're to mimic God in every situation. Then he said, I give, I give unto them dominion. Yes. Then he says, to subdue and dominate. There's a lot of powerful words that were released when God spoke. When God spoke, he didn't touch anything. His words did. Yes. Isn't that just like pollen? Yes. Mm -hmm. When right. pollen shoots, all over the place. What do we do? We grab one of them and say, make a wish. Don't we do that? That's pollen. Pollen, that's pollen too. And we grab it, and we make a wish, and we go, Whoa. And that's what God did. He spoke things, and as he began to speak it, they would have said, it manifested, and it became what he said it was, right? Right. Because what happened? When he spoke it, his words shot out, and they began to go different places, and it took, it took, what was it, uh, time, it took seed time and harvest, meaning that at a certain set of time, this seed will begin to start going into a birth cycle. Mm -hmm. And as it began to go through a birth cycle, then it began to start manifesting. Mm -hmm. Because everything that is created has a time set. So they, uh, let's see, what is it? Weeds, I was told that either weeds or mushrooms are the only thing that grows overnight. So when you have certain issues in your life and it seems as if it just happened overnight, nine times out of ten, it could have been a weed that manifested in your life. Mm -hmm. The thing is, I was, we was at the, uh, at, the, at the plant store, hardware, whatever you want to call that place, knowing I will be there a lot this summer. <laughs> and we were looking at these plants, and I, and I said, who decided what was a plant and what was a weed? Because you got some nice looking weeds. Yes. Sure. You know? Yeah. And it got to the point some people even use weeds. They started to slowly use the weeds in the plant store. They got a plant that looked like a cabbage. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know? 
And then they got the one I love, and I don't even know if we can grow it in our backyard. I guess you got to get it from overseas or some places called Birds of Paradise. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I like that plant so much. Because it looks like a bird's beak. It is, yeah. And so we look at this, about this, never realizing that half the stuff we're going through, we can speak to it. How do you know? Okay, let me think, let me, I'll give you a good example. You're thinking something right now, right? Mm -hmm. It's impossible to go through life without thinking, right? That's right? Even when you wake up in the middle of the night, you're thinking. You're thinking, I wish I could go back to sleep. You're thinking, what was, what, what was that dream? And you're thinking, what should I do? Should I go back to sleep? Should I watch TV? Should I do this? We're always thinking, right? Then sometimes we have thoughts that run through our head and we ask that question, where did that thought come from? Or we'd be walking down the street and then we wonder if that person know what we're thinking, so we try to change our way of thinking and try not to look at them because we think they think that we know they know or what we're thinking, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, how about someone who's on drugs and alcohol? Isn't the first thing they say that they're trying to get off, but it's the voices that keep calling them back? Yes. Or if you try alcohol or something like that, when you go into certain places, if you're an alcoholic, you're a recovered alcoholic, you still hear the voices. Even the smell, you can smell it, but it's not, you can smell stuff and it's not even there. You say, do you smell like it? It's like, no, I don't smell anything. But it's the voice that comes in through the emotions, coming through your imagination, comes in through your sense gates, causing you to believe what you hear. Mm -hmm. And you could be hearing nothing but the thought. But we fail to realize that we can bind up these demonic forces that try to bind us daily. Think about this. When I got called into the ministry, it seemed like everybody and their mother got called into the ministry. I kid you not. It was the weirdest day of my life, or weirdest year of my life. I get called into the ministry, and all of a sudden, everybody and their mama getting called into the ministry. I kid you not. You go into somebody's house and say, yeah, I'm in the ministry. I'm like, wow, really? <laughs> and we were here last week, and you called into the ministry, and you've been in it this long. But you fail to realize that the reason we, oh, I know what I was talking about. But everybody's called into ministry. But then when I got called into ministry, it was the, uh, the prosperity thing began to birth itself again. Remind you, remind you, everything travels in cycles. You know, although they're not talking about it that much now, give it that much time and a little time, it's a generation that's going to come and try to preach it to the point where they're going to think they perfected it. Just like when they had the Reverend Ike thing. They had it and then it died down and then it came into the miracle signs and wonder effect. And then all of a sudden it went down and then it came back to the prosperity thing. But they changed the name. They changed the name with each generation. Yes. So as I looked up, all of a sudden you turn around and there's prophets everywhere. Yep. People that got <laughs> prophetic words for you. And they got oils and waters and jujubes and everything and cloths and everything. And, and you think about it. Most people come to church because they're hurting. Yes. Most people come to church because they're mentally going through something. Yes, mm -hmm. The enemy attacks us in the area of our minds. Yes, he does. That is the worst battlefield because that's the thing yeah. when you when you hear about some people that's in prison, they say they do they go they although they're in they're doing time, time they're not uh what's it, how you go? They're they're although they're in jail, but they're not mentally doing time or something like that. I forget how the word go. But the thing is the most biggest prison or the biggest battlefield is gaining control over your mind. See, we fail to realize the most important weapon we have in our arsenal is this. We don't need anyone to prophesy to us unless God, unless God lead us yes. that way. And when they prophesy to us, it's only bringing forth confirmation or it's bringing yes. forth clarity. It won't confuse Amen. you and it won't put you into bondage and it won't have you addicted to going back and forth to this. Anything yes. else is called what? Witchcraft. Witchcraft. Now, as we begin to look at this word, we begin to look at the reason that sometimes we might not be getting any breakthroughs in our life because we're, we're reciting the words wrong. You notice that it says, uh, we, and I, I keep pondering on it, about the no weapon formed against it. Well, people quit to, scream, to, quit to say that, but they keep forgetting that main important part where it says that God will give us the words to say in the midst of that situation. Then we go on and say, no weapon, we say, uh, God, my, uh, God says his word will not return to you void, but it will do that which he sent it out to do. But it also said that as his word go out, it will prosper in the things where it go. Right. So the thing is, if I'm speaking the word of God, I got to know what that word means, what it's saying, so when it's, when it's released from my mouth, it will do exactly what God said, because the word is like what? Power. Yes. And it will go there, 
and it will be reproduced in that area and bring back what God said that it's got to give me. Yes. But the thing is, we fail to realize how powerful this is. That's why the devil don't want us to, to don't even to speak this. There was a person that said that they uh, uh, they were struggling with this issue, and they went in the name of Jesus, and seemed as if it didn't work well. The thing is, nothing works if you don't believe in it. That's right. You can say in the name of Jesus, you can say the blood of Jesus, and you wonder why that's not working. It's not working for the simple fact is you're saying it out of fear. You're saying it out of doubt. You're saying that, okay, and then once it doesn't work, what happens? People tend to flee. Mm -hmm. It says resist the devil and he will what? Flee. Mm -hmm. It doesn't say resist God and he'll flee. The thing is, if we, the people are, think about this. The church is so plagued with confusion yes. to the point that, what do we really believe? Mm -hmm. It's constantly evolving and changing. We look around and it's hard to tell the children of God from the children of Satan. Because the children of God are led by a blind person that's constantly spewing out fabricated words. Blended with theatrics, causing them to fall victim and pray to the enemy's attack. Amen? Amen. So let's look at this. Last week I had the opportunity to speak at my grandmother's uh, 97th birthday. Amen. It was amazing. Because I was trying to find out, and I'm wondering, okay, God, which way are we going with this? And before I had a chance to touch my papers, I was someplace else. But the, but the theme of it stayed the same. And I began to realize how many people in church, and people go to church week after week, they do the tithes, they do the offerings, they do the rituals, they do everything, but yet still come back home and they pretty much everything pretty much the same. Think about this. You spend whatever how many hours in a place, right? You go to work, you spend a certain amount of time at work. At the end of the day or whatever the first, uh, whatever, whenever you get paid, you get paid, right? Mm -hmm. So what happened? That's a manifestation of, of, of you being there and you getting a reward for being there, right? Well, as we begin to look at our walk with God, we should be able to go to church and come home and, manif and receive some form of his manifested glory when we're in worship. Yes. Some form of his manifestation of his glory in between now, from the moment we walked into church to sometime before the next time we come back, we should have some form of God's manifested glory. And see, the thing is, we fail to realize God's manifested glory because we fail to realize that me going to church week after week, if I don't pick this up, then it's void. Yes. Let me give you an example. How many of you know people that go to the gym week after week, and every time they get free time, they go to the gym, right? Yes. They go to the gym, they hit the weights, they got their, reg they got their schedule, or they say, okay, today I work on this part, today I work on that part. But then when they come home, they eat everything, they eat unhealthy. Right. Or... And, and, and then they wonder, why can't I lose this? Mm -hmm. Or they'll go, they'll, they'll eat healthy, but don't work out. Mm -hmm. And they wonder, why can't I lose this? Amen? Yes. See, the thing is, in order for us to lose some things in our lives, yes. we got to do more than just pray. Mm -hmm. Then they say, pray change everything. Yeah, pray does change everything when you know, when you work, when you do it right. Mm -hmm. Yes. See, people pray, a lot of people, you find a lot of people, they pray what? Out of religion. Yes. How do you know a person praying out of religion? When they're going through all heck and, and when they're going through all hell and high water, the first thing they say, could you pray with me? Could you pray for me? It, that's a religious move. Because the simple fact that when you understand the move of God, when you understand the word of God, yes. then you can understand, okay, God, I need you to give me the words to say in this prayer. Or maybe I just need to just go in tongues. Well, you don't speak in tongues. Well, I need to just sing some songs. I need to do something to break this atmosphere because I, in, 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 in getting a breakthrough, getting God to move, receiving his manifested glory, I got to understand the power of studying. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not just reading. Anybody can read. I can read any book. I have to study. I have to meditate, meditate on this word. And then as I begin to study and meditate on this word, the more I begin to pray, I begin to not pray my will or my words. I begin to pray God's will and God's yes. word. And then praying God's will and God's word as we focus ourselves as we pray, what happened is 
God is speaking to us in our prayer. Have you ever been praying one day or just lashing out or just in, in, your, in, 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 your, in your quiet time with God and all of a sudden God just started moving in an area where you thought there was no breakthrough in? Where you thought everybody gave up on you and you thought God gave up and you wonder what God is and all of a sudden God, after you got, after you got through doing what you were doing, saying what you're saying, then he said, okay, boom. And in the midst of you ranting and in the midst of you going on, you, your answer comes in the midst of you talking. You know, in the midst of you talking and all of a sudden you left it going, oh God, <laughs> you're so funny. See, because it's funny because you were just crying, now you're drying your tears with tears of, it's like the tears of anger turns into a tears of joy at the same midst of time. Because the simple fact, I found out the most deadliest weapon I have is this. Amen. And now I find myself speaking his word, but then God began to correct us in the essence of us speaking yes. his word sometimes, because sometimes yes. we wind up speaking words out of religious uh, cliché. Yes. And that's my big word for oh out of religious <laughs> words. <laughs> that have been made up so much and we recited yes. so much to the point we thought it was the word of God. Right. You know, have you ever prayed a word and you heard it so much and you yes. start praying that word and all of a sudden you're wondering why you're not getting all of a sudden the Holy Spirit said, go look that up. Right. Yeah. <laughs> you start looking it up and you say, wait a minute, I can't find it. And you find out that it's a, it's not even, a, some, sometimes it's a com combination of like five or six words, five or six scriptures yeah. blended together. Or mm -hmm. it's a combination, but it's a combination of stuff that has no power. Yeah. So now we're, we're speaking, we're speaking impotent words to the devil. Mm -hmm. Wondering why we can't get any production, anything, wondering why God's word won't go in and start producing in that situation. Wondering why God's word can't prosper, can't move in my present situation. When you find your mind so perplexed, when you find yourself screaming out loud, when you're wondering what's going on in and around my life, when you feel as if, okay, God, you're not talking, somebody needs to talk. I need to do something because now the enemy is attacking me on my mind. Have you ever been in an area where it felt as if you were losing your mind? Yes. And all of a sudden someone say, and you turn on the TV and the devil speaks through a televangelist. And see, people never, they, you, it's hard to check somebody when you're desperate. Because when you're desperate, you need help. Think about this. Imagine a bill needing being paid like yesterday. Yes. And you need that bill paid like ASAP. And all of a sudden, some dude come on TV rapping and singing about uh, checking, a, checking, a, checking a loan. Mm -hmm. You know, or checking the cash and all these. And mm -hmm. they jump on it. It's like, wow, you know what? I got this. I should be able to get some nice money for this. And next you know, you cash that in, and you have like the hardest time trying to get it back. Mm -hmm. You know? Or you get to the point where the devil said, just let them have it. And then you realize all of a sudden you turn on the TV that, you know, they got so much stuff on TV nowadays. They got that program where they talk about the antiques, how much stuff is worth. You know, and you happen to turn on TV and you find out that stuff you pawned for a hundred bucks is worth a million dollars. And now you can't get it back. Because you know, the pawn shop never give you what it's actually worth. They give you what they think you think it's worth. Right. And you know, and then they sell it for twice what it's worth. Just like when you sell your car, they say, well, okay, I'll give you 500 for this car. And then you come back on the line and find out that car is like triple the amount that you just sold the car for. Mm -hmm. And we fail to realize how important the Word of God is. But back to when we was celebrating my grandmother's 97th birthday, I realized that we're in the state that we're in because of, we don't know how to get our, our, our birthrights. We're blind to our birthright. The things that God has promised us from the foundation of the earth. Then the Bible say that if any man that be in who? Christ. Is what? Preach. Behold. All, All things become, become new. new. Okay. That's why. Then another scripture states in Romans, it says that, uh, where did it go? It says uh, that we're heirs yes, and joint heirs and joint heirs for Christ yeah. Jesus. And then it talks about that we're sons of God, right? right. Yes. So if I'm an heir and a joint heir with Christ Jesus, right, mm -hmm. doesn't that mean that I have an inheritance that I can go get? Amen. Mm -hmm. That's right. See, because inheritance all it is, is something that's passed down to an heir, yes. a successor, mm -hmm. someone else to, you know, that's, that's, that's destined from, from
from childbirth to receive this particular thing. Yes. But the thing is, as believers, many of us walk in curses, walk in bondage, and believe that it's God. You know, God's, you know, have you ever heard That's some people say, well, you know, God's trying to teach me something. Yes. Or God's trying to show me something. Or I, I was walking down the street, and I tripped, and I fell, and I, 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 I bust my leg wide open, and on my way to the hospital, I found $100. I tell you, God, God is good. Mm -hmm. You know, like, how is that possible? <laughs> how are you going to blame God on destroying your body? If God <laughs> wants to do anything, it's already done. It's just out of disobedience that you missed it. Amen? Amen. We have a birthright. We have this thing called a birthright. Mm -hmm. And the birthright is given to an heir. Yes. Okay? An heir of what? Promise. Mm -hmm. When you were born, you were promised something. Mm -hmm. The Bible speaks all the time of how we are heirs and joint heirs. And the Bible speaks of how God adopted us. And he, he said he adopted what we cried, Abba Father. And it, it goes on and on about the things that we're due to inherit the moment we walk into it, and the moment we say, okay, I'm ready for my inheritance. Mm -hmm. But a lot of us tend to not get our inheritance because we don't know how to get our inheritance. Yes. You see, the reason the devil don't want you to read this is because he knows the moment you get this, you become dangerous. The moment you get this, salvation will come to the family members that got, everybody gave up and said it was impossible. The moment you get this, the moment you can be able to speak life into any given situation. And like Paul and you watch it just take place. You see, the word of God brings us peace. The word of God is a two-edged sword. The word of God is the thing that brings life. We ask the question, why can they do this and do that in the days of old when we can't do it now? Because they knew the word in the days of old. Hmm. Yeah. The children knew the, the, the words in the days of old. So when they got older, the older they got, the more the word began to gain, gain power. Mm -hmm. The more the word began to grow like an oak tree in their lives. Yes. So no matter what they're going through, they knew when to stand back and see the salvation of the Lord mm -hmm. and when to stand forward. Look at uh, David. Yes. David was going through all kinds of hell and high water. He was going through a situation where they were thinking about killing him. But David, they say he came to himself. David went and he put on his, his, his he put on, he changed his clothes. Got on his praise and worship gear, right? Yes. That's what that, that, that uniform was called, the praise and worship gear. Mm -hmm. And for paraphrasing. Mm -hmm. And so he put his clothes on, he went into the presence of the Lord. Yes. Where did he go? In the presence of the Lord. In the presence of the Lord. See, we fail to realize that when we read the word of God, the Word of God teaches us how to get into the presence of God, but we're not taught in a lot of places how to get into the presence of God so that the That's presence right. of God can manifest and take us where he needs us to go so that the prayers of the righteous may avail it what? Much. much. So if the prayers of the righteous avail it much, and my prayers aren't getting through, then the question is, I need to get more into here mm -hmm. and then begin to pray the more I get into here. Yes. See, because if I don't pray... Not, un, not knowing how to read God's word, I began to pray my will. Yes. Mm -hmm. Wondering why God won't save my loved one. Mm -hmm. But the more I get into his word, his word will tell me how to pray to save my loved one. Yes. See, because there are certain words i got to say because there's, I have to be able to break free of the things that's binding them and blinding them. The walls. The things, the, 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 you know, we got these things in our lives called walls, right? Mm -hmm. uh, barriers. Where did Bobby come from? Bear. Okay, barriers. Uh, and hindrance. Yeah. Right? Walls, barriers, and hindrance, right? Mm -hmm. Now, we have these walls in our lives, so, but then you think about it. Have you ever just been praying one day or going through some issues in your life and you're wondering and seeing and the enemy, when you turn on the TV, when, you, when, when, when you're trying to get a breakthrough, uh, it always seems as if the enemy has more power than God. You turn on the TV and the witches have more power than the church people. And you, you turn this way and 